So in the world of FPV, we come across 3D printing a lot, but I don't see many people talking about it. So in this video, I kind of want to go into some of the 3D printed parts that are available and just some of the intricacies of what they offer to us. So before I step into this, most of the 3D printed items that I'm going to show you today have been printed by Iradio. You can catch his Instagram channel there, and he's an amazing pilot. Here's his uh, YouTube channel. Go check him out if you would like to get some of these parts printed for yourself. Uh, dude's printer just rocks. So I, I just want to send a special thanks out to him for hooking it up. Uh, I had placed a couple orders with him, and just he 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 printed up some some banging parts. So there's that. If you're interested in getting parts of these of your own, uh, I, I, he comes with a very high recommendation. So there's that. But I want to go into how a 3D printer can make our lives easier, and I, I the reason I. I'm going into this video is because I just purchased one after having a bunch of parts made and I've gone through brain 3d I've gone through eradio uh, I've gone through catalyst machine works and they all print up great parts and I've come to the realization that the, it, it's it's very beneficial to have a printer in this hobby uh, whether that be someone to print for you or a printer yourself. And for me, I decided to have the printer myself. But I'm just gonna go over some of the things that I've had printed. Uh, we've, we've all had session mounts or GoPro mounts printed. This is a, a TPU, it's a flexible material. Um, it, it's grayed out in the elements. The only thing that these really don't survive is the cold weather, they kind of get brittle. Um, so there's that. So one of the first things I had him print were these TPU uh, switch covers. And I like these because they give you a little bit more purchase on the switches. And because you can have them colored, uh, it, it kind of is a visual reference as to what your switches are. So I'm not looking at eight switches of the same color anymore. I know that this one and this one is my arming switch. And I can more easily grab and hold on to these guys. So I, I do recommend having something like this printed for your Tyrannus or your uh, controller. It's just, it, it, it just gives you a lot more purchase and a better texture than the switches themselves just being flat. The other item that I had him print out is for this kickstand. This is the Crossfire Protector. And this kickstand originally had three aluminum dolls that went across here. And what would happen is they would hit onto the Crossfire module and eventually they were gonna mar it up. And it just, I didn't like the way that worked. So I had him print this out and this was designed by an, another 3D print guy. Uh, and I'll put the links to all these prints down in the description below with uh, credit to the makers if I know where they came from. Like these switch covers, I don't know who made them and I'm not just gonna randomly put somebody else on there. But like this, I know who the maker is, so I'm gonna credit them. So just know if they're, if they're not up there, uh, I'll just put like generic next to it. So these might be the switch covers, they might not be. But moving forward, what I liked about this is it gives you access through the kickstand to both read your crossfire and to operate it. Uh, the other thing I liked is it has a set of kickstands on it so that when you push this down, it doesn't hit into the crossfire module. So highly recommend that if you're using this kind of module. Uh, this is printed out of a PETG. This is a plastic that can withstand the elements outside. So if you're gonna be out in the sun, which obviously this is going to be out in the sun, um, this is what you wanna print it out of, not some PLA or something that's gonna melt in the sunlight or in the car. Um, so this next item I printed out of the same material. This is the PETG. And this is just a plug. Where this goes is right here. This plugs up your charge port. And this fits in there really good. And you're not gonna get that out accidentally or 
uh, even even on purpose that's gonna be difficult to get out but why would you put something like that well I have replaced the battery in this with a light bulb and when doing that you can no longer use the charge port on the side of this Tyrannus now you can go in and take this thing apart and remove that system but if I want to switch the battery back and still access this charge port it, it's still there and available for me but this is going to keep anyone from accidentally plugging in your charge your, your charger to this charge port so that's another highly recommended print uh, there is also a print now for the boss cam i printed it out and i've got to modify it it does not work I was originally going to record that video today and show you how to change all that and put the new one on, um, but I, I ran into some difficulty with that. I'm gonna have to modify it and go from there. So know that that video is coming eventually as soon as I figure out how to modify something that's already made. So the next item I had printed is this guy here. This is a ring. This is gonna go actually inside of this transmitter. Uh, this is going to go right there and what this allows you to do is put a 40 millimeter I believe this is a 40 millimeter um, Speaker in there and this is actually going to go The speaker is going to go just like that and then this is going to go into that port there So you'll see the open speaker here And this is going to allow you to have this upgraded speaker inside of this Tyrannus So you can put actual music in this and it's going to sound way better than the stock speaker so that's a look at some of the modifications that I've made to this transmitter. Uh, very happy so far with the outcome and what these are bringing to the table. So there's that. Uh, we can't leave the fat sharks out. So one of the major prom uh, problems with the HDO specifically is you don't want to leave these out in the sunlight. What will happen is the... OLED screens will burn out. So to fix this issue, there's this guy here. This is TPU, and as you can see, it's fairly flexible material. And it's got these two clips here, and then it's got a handle here. What you do with this is you've got a hole here and a hole here. You put those little guys right into that hole on the other side, and just place it like that. Now, if you put your goggles like this out in the sunlight, the sunlight can't get to the OLED screens and will prevent them from being burned out. So that's a modification that I highly enjoy. And it's very easy to remove. You just grab it and pull it out. And to put it back in, you can do almost one. Yeah, you can kind of do it. Just pop it back in, pop it down, and you're good to go. Uh, this is beneficial even if you're at an event and want to wear these around your neck and just kind of let them hang down like this on your chest. Uh, great little upgrade that you can put this in there and when you're done, take it out, put it in your pocket and save your goggles. So there's that. And the other thing that I just printed out on my machine, um, if you notice here, to take these straps out, you've got this slice right here. And if you pull on these straps hard enough, they'll actually come out. And what you're going to find right now is they're not that easy to put back in. They're a lot easier to rip out than they are to put back in. So. Clearly, that's annoying if they pull out. If you pull hard enough, you can actually see it starting to kind of pull into that, and eventually these will fall out. Uh, but I've got a quick fix for that. I just printed these. Uh, these are printed out of that same PETG material. And how to install these, they're gonna sit right inside here like this. And I'm sorry I printed these in black. It makes it hard to see, but to put these in, Kind of slide them in behind the strap like this. Get them lined up in the middle of the strap. And then we're going to roll the whole strap like this. This is going to fit into that slot. 
and that now captures. I can pull on this, and as you can see, it, it really doesn't pull into that location at all. And if I move the strap up, you can see how that is installed. There's a piece right here, it's a T. To get it out, uh, you can see it kind of pops up just a pinch there. To, so to get it out, we're gonna push on that little part where it comes up like that. And then as you can see, it just comes right out. So that's another mo little mod that I highly recommend. I'm gonna go ahead and install this one. This one you'll be able to see a little bit easier. This just slides right in like that. And that's it. Now these are not gonna come out accidentally. And also we can use some TPU on our motor arms to protect some of the carbon from getting hit. This is actually a session frame and this is a build that uh, I am still in the middle of. Uh, I, I, will, I will be putting this one up on YouTube as well. I think I have the beginning of this filmed um, but I, it's kind of been put on the back burner for now. I got a lot of other stuff going on. It's a very busy time right now. So uh, this one is coming, but this is the um, Source One frame, and these are the Lumineer. These are the 2207, 2450 KV. But anyway, I bring this on just to show you. These are printed by uh, Brain 3D. They come with this. They come with the front uh, protector for the frame and it comes with a gopro mount as well and i don't have the gopro mount out here so but it's the same color uh, so there is a lot of 3d printed parts available for this hobby it's almost beneficial uh to have your own 3d printer i think at this point so i th i really think that we use it enough that it might be beneficial to add 3d printing to this channel uh leave me a comment below what do you think is that something you would like to see or uh, are you just fine just buying your own parts or you don't even use 3D printing and you hate it and you don't like the scratchy line bits? Uh, let me know. Let me know. Uh, I, I truly think that it's such a helpful item to this hobby and it's kind of a rabbit hole hobby on its own. So I, I might go ahead and add it. I, I'm not quite certain. So with that, if you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button because we only get to do it once. It's fun. Catch you later. Peace.